day to you. We hope you had a fabulous weekend and we're so glad that you're back here with us on Hope Today. I'm Anna Schmidt and I'm here with Tom Hollis. And Tom, how was your weekend? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was rainy. We were at the cabin and uh, you know, it's it, it's okay. You know, you're up in the woods and you can read and just have a little fire going yeah. and uh, you know, but it was, uh, it was really nice. And uh, how about yours? Yeah, it was good. Oh, I went to the Brandon Lake concert over the weekend. I don't know if you were there or not. I saw a lot, a lot of people there. 8,000 filled the house wow. and it was an anointed concert. Just God's presence fell in that place. And it's awesome to see the body of Christ coming together. It's like a little slice of heaven. Absolutely. You know, and uh, we're going to hear more about that kind of thing when uh, you're going to see an interview with Zach and Camille Wabel who are missionaries in East Africa. You're gonna hear about what God is doing there. You're also gonna be hearing about a very special event that took place at a university. Uh, you've been hearing a lot about universities, haven't you? And about things that have been happening, uh, but you haven't heard uh, this kind of story. So uh, you'll be uh, want to stay around for that as well. Yeah, I was reading this book this weekend. It was um, not a Christian book, it was a secular author, and she was talking about how traditional religion has become irrelevant in this day. And you know, I have to say that kind of hit a little nerve yeah, sure. <laughs> for me. And I think about when we hear these stories, like God is still moving. And in our culture, they want us to think, they want our culture to believe that traditional religion, that Jesus Christ is irrelevant today. And it's awesome to see the stories that we'll hear later about young people worshiping God, to see what was happening at that concert this weekend. We're about to hear what's happening in Africa, like truly all around the world. Jesus and his good news of the gospel is relevant and it is working. Well, it is. And, you know, God is on the move and God is doing things. And, you know, sometimes there's uh, seasons where things are just poured out incredibly. We saw that last year with the Asbury revival. And other times it's just growth. It's just growing and God doing things in a more quiet way, but still active. And, you know, I, I just want to take this moment to say, if you have a need, there are always active prayer partners ready to pray with you so that you can call our prayer line and uh, get hold of someone there. They will be glad to pray with you, be glad to, glad to take your request with you to that active God who wants to do something in your life. And, uh, you know, so be sure to take advantage of that. Well, we're going to take a quick break. After that, we're going to come back with Zach and Camille Wabel. We're going to hear what's going on in Africa. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God. But they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Zach and Camille Wabel, we are so glad to have you guys here with us today. If you could do me a favor and just share a little bit of who you are, where you come from, and we know that where you're going, where you are even in the future and today. Yeah, so uh, I'm from this area actually. I grew up about 15, 20 minutes away. I went to Penn Trafford High School and um, in 2008 I went to a Bible college in uh, North to Eastern, uh, it's called, it's called Zion Bible College it's in Haverhill, Massachusetts. But anyways, from there, I felt the call of God to Africa. And I have spent the last 10 years working with a Muslim people group uh, within East Africa. And my wife has a little different journey how she got there. 
Um, so my parents were born in Cameroon and um, I was born in France, um, most of my family's in Europe and um, I graduated from high school, studied university and when I was 20 I just really wanted to study science but in English and so I went um, to Holland, the Netherlands and then I went to Germany to, to study about neuroscience and as I was finishing up my PhD I felt the Lord call me to the mission field. Wow, it's so, first of all, Pittsburgh, let's go, and yes, Boston, that's back right. to where I went to school. I love awesome. that. Um, and, you know, a PhD to now going into more of a overseas ministry type of work, right? Mm. Tell me a little bit about that and how did you get there? Yeah, so where we work, um, there's not an open invitation for, um, let's say, ministers or missionaries to go. And so, um, we had to find a different trade or a different avenue where we could uh, be able to share our faith and our hope in Christ. And so, um, yeah, I went as an English teacher and even for my wife, she has a PhD in neuroscience, but for her to go to an area where she couldn't use her studies or um, maybe there weren't universities for her to work at or to teach or lecture, uh, it's a bit of a humbling experience, but it's kind of what Christ did when he left mm -hmm. heaven and came to earth. Um, to seek and to save those who were lost. And so uh, even for us, we realize maybe our backgrounds or the things we study don't open the doors for us. Um, but uh, at least for the two of us being English speakers, we had a huge open door to be able to share English um, and teach English as a second language to get into the hearts of, of Muslims, yeah. And yeah, and another thing is, um, you know, back in the days, all missionary forefathers, um, thought of becoming doctors and nurses and teachers mm -hmm. to, to go to the mission field but currently um, anyone who is called by God can go to the field because you go and you bring your trade, you bring your skills and so it doesn't really matter to be honest what you have studied, God can use all of that. Um, yeah, that's been our experience. Yeah, yeah. true. I love that. I mean two lives who've truly surrendered everything mm -hmm. to pursue the voice of God. Now when you say I heard the voice or, or I felt the calling. What did that specifically look like for each of you? Yeah, just go first. Um, so I, um, I, was, I had been a believer for about 10 years when, when I felt the Lord call me to the missions. Um, and quite early on as I, as I started knowing the Lord, I was, I was hungry to hear his voice. And uh, my best friend, she often had dreams that were from God. And I remember crying out to God and saying, Lord, would you give me dreams too? Um, and, I, and I remember pursuing that, you know, the, the Bible talks about desiring spiritual gifts. And I thought, God, I would love for you to speak to me through dreams. And, um, and so I slow, slowly saw the Lord um, starting to speak to me through dreams and I was hungry for more. Mm -hmm. And so back in, it was in 2016, I was finishing up my studies in Germany and um, I just had that dream. The first dream that I had was God speaking to me in the dream, telling me I'm sending you overseas. Um, and I woke up and I was shaken and I was at the same time very thrilled and, and excited. And about a month later, I had another dream. I was on a ferry, a massive ship with lorries and cars and hundreds of people. And um, in, in that, in, on that ferry were hundreds of Muslims. Mm -hmm. And they were raising their hands up to the air and they were worshiping the King Jesus. Mm -hmm. And my mom, in the next scene you know, of that dream, my mom was next to me in the dream and I turned to her and I remember telling her, Mom, we're going to Tanzania, but we're going to the islands, we're not going to the mainland. I woke up from that dream thinking, what is that? I'd even go to the islands of Tanzania. And I Googled it up and I literally typed, how do you go to the islands of Tanzania? <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that very ferry I had seen in my dream. I had never seen such a ferry before. I've never been on a ferry before. And I, I said, that's exactly what I saw in the dream. And that's just how I knew that God was going to send me to, to that region. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. And how are you? <laughs> Uh, for me, yeah, so my home church where I got saved and kind of was discipled and grew up, they had a strong emphasis on missions. And I remember we had a wall in our church um, of 60 different missionaries that the church supported. Mm -hmm. And our church w wasn't a big church, it wasn't a mega church, maybe uh, close to 100 people. Um, but my pastor had a big vision and a heart for missions. And so every week we would pray for the missionaries. Every time a missionary came back from overseas, they would share with the congregation, they would share testimonies of miracles and the different things God was doing. I remember from a young age 
hearing these stories and, and you know, sometimes growing up in, in the West, um, we don't always have the same encounters. We might read in the Bible and see demon possession or see some miraculous accounts from the book of Acts. But that was normal New Testament Christianity. And um, there, are, there are moments we see them here in America, but I remember at least growing up thinking, why, don't, why isn't what I'm reading in the Bible lining up with what I'm seeing you know, in my own life? And so I'd hear these stories and think, it was kind of naive, but I thought it's only happening in Africa. It's only happening, happening in South America. And so uh, there were seeds placed in my heart from a young age. Yes. And then I went to Bible school and um, got formal training. And I remember, um, you know, I used to help a lot of uh, foreigners. We had, we had scholarships for students from Africa and different places that uh, they would come and study theology. And so I helped a lot of them write their papers and with their English. And it didn't hit me until my senior year. All of my friends are African. I have friends from the Congo, friends from Kenya, friends from Liberia. And um, the Lord kind of used that to uh, direct my heart whenever I was a senior. And I thought, you know, I think God's calling me to Africa. Wow, I love how from a suddenly to a process, a journey, the Lord speaks to us all differently, but we must all give a yes, and you all are certainly doing that. We are so thankful for the work and the ministry that you are doing in East Africa. As believers, as those watching today, can you tell us in just a few moments, how can we be praying and supporting your work and ministry? Um, Please pray for opportunities um, yes. that the Lord would open doors for us to share the gospel. Yes. Um, that is a that is a, a recurrent prayer request. Yes. Um, and please be praying for we call them MBBs, Muslim background believers that have surrendered to Christ and that are willing to to pay the price to serve Christ and to see their friends and their their family members and their relatives and neighbors come to see um, Jesus to us, King and Lord and Savior. Yes. I would also say um, Luke 10:2 says Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, the labors are few. Therefore, pray unto the Lord of the harvest that he would send labors into the vineyards or into the harvest fields. Um, and we, as we're back in the States for the next several months, um, we travel around churches, we speak, we share what God's doing. But one of our prayer requests is that the Lord would call more laborers into the harvest fields, that he would call more individuals and families to become missionaries. Um, so we set our alarm every day at 10.02 and we pray, Lord of the harvest, send more laborers. Yes. Well, yeah. We will be agreeing for that, that mm. the Lord of the harvest would send more laborers mm. and that the opportunities would be plentiful. Thank you so much for your ministry and your work in East Africa. And we pray all of God's blessings over you both. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. <laughs> Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Well, we've got a great story for you. Uh, you know, I just uh, want to pause for a second to, to the, the, the Wables, Anna. That, that was an amazing thing that God did, bringing them together right. and then placing them right where they needed to be. Yeah, it is. You know, it's like God knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty smart. Pretty well, smart guy. <laughs> I know. Like God has this whole big plan for this world and it includes you and me. And sometimes we feel like, like 
were just this little insignificant person. And yet it was God's plan from the very beginning to use us, these ordinary creatures, to just be infused with the power of God through his Holy Spirit, to go out and be that worker in the earth, to be an ambassador for Christ. And, you know, maybe you're not called to be a missionary to East Africa, but you are called to love God, to love others, to be used by him in a powerful way. And these stories are so inspiring to me, yeah. Tom, because- Let me say this. Y yes, yeah. you are. You're, you're called to go to East you're Africa. To East Africa. <laughs> Tom's telling you right now, you're called to go to East Africa. <laughs> you know, we always say that, don't we? Oh, well, maybe you're not gonna go. But some people are. Some people are called. Maybe it's you. Yeah, some people <laughs> truly are. We are not all called We're there. All Although called. if we do go there, hope today is still there. That's so. <laughs> right. That's right. That's, uh, well, I just wanted to uh, mention that. But we have our Meaningful Monday story, which I love this story. While many of, your, of our college campuses across the nation are battling police and chanting anti-Israel slogans, one college campus decided to do something different. They decided to gather and worship Jesus. This past Wednesday, students at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, stood side by side to sing songs of praise. Chancellor Jonathan Falwell said this, how amazing it is that Liberty students come to our lawn and what do we do rather than attacking one another is lift up the name of the only one who is worthy of our praise and that is Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He urged students to remain steadfast in their faith. He said, Every day when we wake up and put our feet on the ground, we have to decide that on this day, no matter what I face, no matter what I come up against, no matter what situations I may have to navigate, I'm going to honor God, I'm going to serve Christ, and I'm going to run after him. We just want to thank Michael Faust from Crosswalk Headlines for this story. Anna, how does that story hit you? I mean, it makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so encouraging truly to see I mean, how many weeks on these Meaningful Mondays have we seen young people on fire for Christ? Folks, this is our next generation that is coming up behind us that they were planted on this earth for such a time as this, as the world gets darker, that Jesus Christ is going to shine brighter and he's gonna do it through young people. He's going to do it through us. And there truly is so many reasons to have hope that there's people all around the earth still lifting Jesus high. Yes, and I think it's important that we report on that as well. Yes, we can't ignore what's going on on our college campuses. We can't ignore the news, but you know, uh, sometimes we need to get away from the news or hear some good news. In mm -hmm. fact, that's why there's a wonderful Christian, uh, you know, there's Christian headlines, Crosswalk is another one, Charisma Media. There's various places where you can get uh, news of what is happening around the world that you're probably not gonna hear about on uh, CBS, NBC, and ABC, or even Fox News and some of the other ones. You need to hear about the good things that God is doing. And I just wanted to take this time to share a scripture with you and to, to just share uh, something that God has laid on my heart for you. Now, we heard about good things today, right? We heard about the, the missionaries and the good things that are happening. But you know, they didn't even say necessarily where they were at exactly because of so many barriers there are to, the God, to God's message getting out to people. There are so many places in the world that still do not allow Christianity to flourish uh, in the Muslim world, in the communist world, in other places. There are just uh, so, many, so much persecution and so many lids on trying to keep the gospel down, but God's word is not like that. And Anna, I wanted to read a, a scripture uh, and share with our, our people from, this is out of Micah chapter four, and it's verse two. And I want to share this with you because this is what God is moving towards. Listen to this. This is after Micah had talked about some bad things that were going on, but this is the promise. And this is the promise that God had for ancient Israel, but also for us. And, and you'll see any who want to know God, it says this, and many nations will come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us about his ways and that we may walk in his paths. This is the heart of God. This has been the heart of God from the beginning. We know as Christians, we are called to take the gospel around the world, but even from the beginning, God had the plan, 
had the plan for Israel to do that, had the plan for the truth of, of, of uh, the beauty of God to, to go around the world. But Anna, I love this promise that people are saying, hey, let's go up to the house of the God of Jacob. Right. Let's go there. There are people that are hungry for the gospel. Sometimes we think yes. they're, they're not hungry. They are hungry to hear from what God has to say. Yeah, I really believe deep in my heart that people nowadays, they're getting hungrier and hungrier for the good news of the gospel because as we look around us, we see people trying all different paths to find that wholeness, to find joy, to find healing and hope. And any other path that doesn't have Jesus involved is going to be a dead end. People are experiencing that. And then I believe that the time is ripe, that it's right now that God's word is shining brighter that folks are like, oh, okay, maybe I'll try this out. And they see that it is something that is real. And you know what else I love about that scripture is it talks about how as we're learning God's ways that we are walking in God's ways. And sometimes we can like sit in our little church huddles and Bible study. And while it's good to study the Bible and to know what the Bible says, we can't forget that part to go out and walk in his ways and to truly be that light in this world. Yeah, you know, in the Old Testament, there was a place, you know, that if you wanted to hear from God, you were gonna to come to Jerusalem, you're gonna to come to the temple. Now God spoke to other people at various times and various places, but it's clear that now we bring that out, okay? We take that out to the people around us, maybe to East Af Africa, I keep harping on that. Who, who out there is called to East Africa? Maybe you are. Uh, you know what? God's called all of us somewhere to bring the light and to bring that, that, the, the wonderful message of the gospel. In fact, if we drop down a few verses after this, it says this, listen to this, in verse six and seven, Micah uh, chapter four. In that day, declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather outcasts. Isn't it interesting? God's not looking for the, the perfectly talented and the, the people that have everything all together. He says, I'm going to gather the lame and the outcast, even those that I've afflicted. So in, in, in the Old Testament, you know, God brought judgment. He brought judgment against people. And sometimes he set, sort of lets us have our own way. And, and, that, and we experience this affliction when we're walking away from God. But he says, I'm going to bring all those people back. And he says, I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion. Listen, this is the word of God that he has taken our broken lives. And he has put us back together and he has said, now go out. I've, I've healed you. You were lame and I've healed you. You were an outcast and I've brought you back into my family. Think of, the, think of the prodigal son. He's brought us back in and he's restored us. And he says, now that I've healed you, go out and, and heal others. Go out and bring that. He sent them out by, two by two, 70 of them uh, when he was still on the earth. And they brought the great gospel uh, of the kingdom to people around them and he healed people. And this is our, this is our call and this is our promise that he's going to take us out uh, from heal us and then take us out to bring healing to others. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we all live in this sin-soaked world and we have been impacted by various trials and traumas throughout our lives that has made us sometimes wonder like, what does God have for me today? What does he have for my future? This past weekend, I was reading in Jeremiah 1, the verse that says, that before you were born, that I knew you, that I set you apart for a purpose. Now for Jeremiah, it talked about how he was set apart to be a prophet to the nations. But that part that is about how God knew us before we were even born, that he formed us and that every day of our lives, it talks about in Psalm 139, every day of your life before you, was, you were born was written out in God's in, in eternity, that God has a purpose for you. He has infused you with that and with spiritual gifts. 
-hmm. Listen, you have spiritual gifts that can be ignited, that can be um, just built on. And as you step out and you're brave and you get out of your comfort zone to go out and do what God's called you to do, that he will increase those spiritual gifts to strengthen them so that you can be effective. You know, God has a message today. Our, our guest, Deborah Giles, was supposed to be with us today. We've promoted that, and we're unfortunately, uh, because of technical issues, we were not able to speak to her, and we'll, we'll get her back in. But what is God's message for you today? First of all, do you know Him? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You say, well, Tom, I, I went to church, or I still go to church. Well, I'm, I'm, that's good, but I'm not really asking about that. Have you come to the place where you've totally trusted him as your savior. We say, you know, when, what you do is you just open up the door of your life and say, Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you and, and I've, I've kind of made a wreck of my life. We're, some of us are like those outcasts. We've sort of done that to ourselves. We've cast ourselves out, but God is bringing you back today. So open that door of your life and say, Father, through Jesus, forgive me of my sins come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you and I will serve you and I will, I will walk after you. Please fill me with your spirit, fill me with power that I can do that. God's calling you that today. So don't resist him. Reach out and, uh, and he's, as he's reaching out to you. It's so much about God reaching down to us more than us reaching up and being able to, to reach him. We can never do that, but he reaches down and draws us to himself. Today is the day of salvation for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, following God, being a child of God, let me tell you, there is nothing else like it on this earth. It is exciting. If you, if you feel like being a Christian is boring or you feel like maybe, maybe your walk right now with the Lord is sort of dry and boring, well, let me tell you something. All you have to do is seek God with all of your heart, all your mind, all of your soul, because whatever, whatever situation you're in right now, God wants to use that. He wants to use you. And so just seek him today, get in his word, learn to walk in his ways. Like sometimes we overcomplicate it, right? And I've just been really digging in deep to this the first command, the most important commandment is to love God and love others. And if you are at home or you're homebound, you can't get out, then you can send cards. You can call people. If you're a stay-at-home mom, oh gosh, sister, you've got these little lives around you that you get to invest in and you are raising them up to be disciples of Christ like what an incredible and worthy calling to be that. If you're out being an executive, man, the network that you have, the opportunities that you have to love Christ are all around you. So look about you, see how God wants to use you today to spread the love of Christ. Thank you so much for being with us.